Hi there, what I want to speak to you to, in this video clip is about a group or classification of elements called the transition elements or the transition metals. In the previous video clip I spoke about groups 1, the alkali metals, group 7, the halogens and group 8 or group O, the inert or no or gases. I've also said in a previous video clip the simple picture of the periodic table it would be consistent of columns called groups and going across called periods. When Mendeleev originally mentioned the concept of the periodic table he classified them according to their atomic weight. However, later on scientists they discovered other elements which did not fit his patterns. Today the modern periodic table is arranged according to its atomic number. And what happened was as other elements were discovered, they did not fit into that pattern, into the normal eight columns, the eight groups. And these elements are found between group two and group three. And these are the transition elements or transition metals. Examples of these are Chromium, Cr, Iron, Fe, Cobalt, Co, Ni, Nickel, and Cu, Copper. These differ in the properties of Group 1 metals. I said in the previous video clip that you drop them into water that the, 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 a react just like that and the soft you know sodium you could cut with a knife lithium as well you could cut it with a knife potassium the metal you can cut it with a knife but these transition elements you can't because they're more dense and they've got higher melting points and why are they more dense and why have they got higher melting points? It's because of the internal structure. Inside a metal, there's the atoms like that, and they're attracted to each other, etc. And the links between them, the bonds, are very strong compared to that of lithium or sodium. That is why they are harder the more dense and also the structure of them makes them less reactive like the loath to react with water and oxygen. Like I've said you take a piece of sodium you, if you cut it, it turns white straight away because the oxygen is reacting with the, the, the sodium. But that doesn't occur with things like chromium. That's why things are chromium plated. They don't rust or uh, corrode. Iron does rust and uh, corrode, but it's quite slow. So the transition elements in some uh, ways are not that reactive. Let's look at some more properties of the transition elements. Like I, if I took most of group one and two, those metal compounds, sodium chloride, they're all white. Whereas if I took the transition elements, the compounds are colored. For example, let's look at some of these. If I took copper 2 plus, 
The salt of that is, is, is copper sulfate, nitrate or blue. And if I took something like iron, iron two ions in a compound, the greenish, and if I took something like manganese, Mn, manganese plus seven, it's purple, nickel, and I, two plus, they are green or blue. So that is another difference between the alkali metals and the transition elements. Transition elements form co co coloured compounds. And it is because it's the properties of the internal structure which makes them have variable valencies, various colours, greater range of compounds. For example, how do I go from copper to copper one plus ions? It loses one electron. How do I go from copper to copper two? It loses two electrons and iron forms iron two plus ions and iron three plus ions. Nickel the same. Manganese can form plus two to plus seven. This is found in that compound potassium permanganate. It's purple. So what properties of these make to transition metals and why they're called that the transition? If you looked at the periodic table, groups one and two going across, you gradually change, you go from metals to non-metals. That's the transition from metals and non-metals. Chromium, you chromium plate things because it's not prone to oxidation, it's not going to rust, etc, etc, etc. These elements, like copper, malleable, can be shaped into things. Nickel, the same, can be mixed with copper to make your silver coins they have things in common one of the other things about transition elements is they're useful as catalysts i'll be speaking about that in a bit more detail but what a catalyst is is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical re reaction something slow add a bit of a catalyst to it it speeds up the rate of reaction but at the end of the reaction catalysts remain unchanged there's a process like if you took something like the harbour process haber process you choose to make ammonia and h3 in which it takes nitrogen and hydrogen under pressure with an iron catalyst it speeds up the rate of reaction another example is margarine margarine hello i can't spell it Marger, real or gone blind Marger. Green. <clears throat> what they do is they take seeds, crush them up, and they get this oil, and then they pass hydrogen through that oil with a nickel catalyst. And a nickel catalyst 
speeds up the rate of the reaction. I'll quickly tell you how a catalyst works. You take a reactant or reactants, combine them together in some way and they produce a product, a new compound. And to get them to react, you have to apply a certain amount of energy. Whereas if you add a bit of the, a catalyst, it makes them not require so much energy, activation energy, but it finds a different route to go to. It lowers the activation and energy. Well, that's about all what I'd like to say on the transition elements. And in a later topic, I'll be speaking about the role of them more specifically in catalysis and in the harbour process.